Uh, welcome to uh, fall. Uh, so I think no matter where you are in the world, I think it's fall. Well, actually, if you're in the southern hemisphere, so where we are in the northern hemisphere, we've gone into gone into fall. I, I was thinking today about the substance of our attention that uh, when I think about giving and receiving attention, I realized that earlier in my life, I would experience it as uh, a, a kind of a narrow uh, line or uh, it, it, it had a, a sense of not, not being full, but of really just being, you know, like pinpointed. So giving attention would also be uh, um, where I really wanted to, to poke at something rather than giving attention. And so I wanted to explore all of the different qualities of your attention, of my attention. And I wanted to invite you to use your hands to, to tune into your attention and to kind of shape your attention. So um, if you have it just as a, you know, like a straw, like you're sending your attention through a straw through, and just notice how it is to aim your attention in that very precise way. So aiming it out and aiming it in. And I have a sense that for most of us, we learned to narrow our attention rather than letting it be full. And so I wanted to invite you to play with it like what would it be like if you shaped your your attention was really like a big fluffy cloud that you could move from one place to another? So first, I'd like you to just shape it. Like, where does your attention come from? And then, uh, so most of us, attention is up here. So if you let your attention come from all of your body and you shaped it and then you let it, you let the cloud float off and land on something else. Just notice what it's like to let your attention be that spacious and how you experience that inside. And if you let that, that cloud then land on you, and get absorbed into you. What does? How do you experience that? And I like. I'd like you to just play with that for a couple of different shifts of letting that, shaping that cloud, letting it move out, and then letting that cloud. And it might have. Sometimes when I go through a cloud that has mist in it, I feel these these tender little, little kisses on my body from the mist. And I invite you to let your attention land on you like that mist that opens and refreshes you. And I find too, and the science is really clear about this, that the more that you use your body, you know, gestures and moving your body, the more you're able to experience a whole body intelligence rather than just a, a head centric intelligence. So, uh, also, I'd like you to imagine your your attention like a stream, you know, like a mountain stream. And so I'd like you to, you know, let your body shape that, let your hands shape that, let yourself enjoy the, the stream, literally the streaming going over rocks and going around, you know, and maybe this inner sound of the stream of attention. And when you give a stream of attention, like I'm, I'm my, one of my cats, Allie is over here in the room and I'm gonna let my stream of attention flow around her and land on her. And then I'm gonna let it come back and the streaming, like where in your body would you like to experience more streaming, more of you know, movement and flow and let your attention support that. And there uh, may also be sound that wants to come with that. And notice how different that is than just pay attention. So a stream of attention. And then I'd like you to imagine that your attention is a pool that you step into and that you can feel, you know, in 
your feet or if it's a deeper pool, you're sitting in that pool and the pool is surrounding you. And you can experience then the warmth of attention or the coolness of attention, depending on what your uh, favored uh, contact is today, if you're wanting more warmth or you're wanting more cool. So letting your, for a moment, your love scoops play in that pool around you. So not even bringing it uh, to you because you're already in it. So what's it like to be in your pool of loving attention? You're like your own personal kitty pool um, that uh, you know has maybe your own favorite toys in it or uh, you know, it has floating roses, but you're enjoying being surrounded by this pool of love that you can then direct. Because I sometimes forget, uh, and I think most people forget that we're mostly water. And so I like to, you know, like we're literally built of mostly water. <laughs> and so uh, that's, uh, I go, why am I using so many water images? Well, it's because we're mostly water. And to let that fluidity serve you, because I have found that the more I can let myself be soft with my attention, the more I can respond to what's going on in life and it's going on in the world, that when I get rigid, I narrow my choices. But when I get more fluid, more possibilities open up to me, more choices open up to me. So as you've been playing with this, notice if there's any place in you specifically or sort of generally that would like more attention. Like I have a little kink in my right shoulder today. And so I'm going to be giving just a little bit extra attention to that place. And now how would you like to give attention to that place that's asking for it? Would it be more like the, the streaming? Would it be more like mist? Would it be more like sitting in the middle of a wonderful pool of love and then you're directing it to that? Yes. And so giving yourself a moment to experience that. Beautiful. I love how so many of you are letting your whole body respond. Because I find if I do this first thing in the morning, I'm kind of waking up my whole body, then my whole body intelligence can support me through the day. So the, the water, the water of attention, you know, nourishing us, uh, supporting us, uh, feeding us. First thing I do when I wake up in the morning is have water. And so what if the first thing that you did was to give yourself that quality of attention. And then in your surroundings to give that quality of attention. Hmm, beautiful, beautiful. And um, the uh, are we ready, Darlene? For Darlene is is our substitute teacher today. Thank you so much, Darlene. And uh, Michelle is traveling and visiting uh, relatives. So I'd love if you could bring up the card, beautiful. So I'd like you all to let yourself uh, look at the, the space here, the cosmic space, uh, and to let yourself take in that cosmic space for you and notice stepping into the cosmic space. And as you're looking at that, I'd like to read this to you, the first the um, sentence and then the question. I recognize and use my whole body yes signals to choose which agreements I want to make. Ah, so let yourself take that in, letting those swirls of water and uh, you no know, uh, water is uh, at its core space also. So it's oxygen, you know, uh, at, at the core of it, it's oxygen. So let yourself take that in and notice how, how as you're drinking that in, let me say that one once more. I recognize and use my whole body yes signals to choose which agreements I want to make. Hmm, and taking a couple of breaths and notice how that lands for you. 
I love how this little girl has her her cosmic suit on. You know, she <laughs> stepping out into the cosmos. She's all dressed up for the cosmos. Uh, and here's the uh, question: What can I draw on from my whole body wisdom to select agreements I do want to make? What can I draw on from my whole body wisdom to select agreements I do want to make? Yes, and I love how some of you are letting your whole body respond to that. So come on back to the whole group. And I want to just talk about that for a little bit. So I realized as I was looking at this particular card that it took me a long time to get really comfortable with and clear about, is this a yes? Am I, what are my yes signals? And uh, my, my sense is developmentally that no occurs before yes. That no is really essential. And we took a look at no recently also. How do I, how do I know I want to, I don't want to make an agreement. So the yes signals, I'd like you to take a moment to tune into what you know currently about your internal yes signals. Like if someone says, hey, would you like to go to this uh, lecture that's you know happening tomorrow night? What happens for you? So if I say, hey, would you, would you like to, and then notice what happens. And notice what wakes up in you or, or, or if you get any body signals uh, when, you're, when you're tuning into that question. My sense is that yes, is an opening. And so for most of us, and I think our brains are mostly saying no. I mean, we know that mostly what goes on in your brain is no, <laughs> that your body says not this, not this. And it's really sorting so that you're not overwhelmed by stimulus all the time. So no is very, very important to give us space to say yes. But what are your yes signals? So here are a couple of suggestions because I, I, I think it's individual for each of us. But my experience is that yes is an opening. And uh, so there'll be some, and for me, it's also, an, uh, there's some upness in it. So there's up, opening, and wide. So for me, my, my body kind of goes, you know, it's like, oh, what's here? Like, oh, it's a kind of like, oh, there's a surprise. Oh, so um, the, the upness and the like, ooh, what's there's a treat here. Whereas no has more of solid, it's more closing. Um, I go more into more my spine. You know, I have more of a, you know, I get a little bit more serious because I, uh, and I've learned over the years to be able to say no without getting really, you know, stern faced that I can just say no now uh, without any particular affect, but at first, you know, I really had to like, no, uh, because I didn't really even trust my own no. And my sense is also that playing with yes and no, your body experience of yes and no is so foundational to your daily choices. It's really at the, at the base of allowing you to expand your freedom of choice. And so give it any attention that you give to yes and no is really worth your while. So for me, yes, it, I, and I feel the opening in the front of my body, but I also feel for me opening in my ribs. So my ribs kind of go out to the side. I get, so I'm getting more breath. There's a breath of possibility. So I invite you to let yourself wonder through this whole week of what are my signals? What are my yes signals? And also there's, a, there's an element too of being proactive in this that I wanted to suggest to you because mostly I would wait for people to ask me or I would wait for the question to come and then I would consider. But if I were go like going into a meeting with someone, I wanna really tune into what are the agreements that I do want to make and using my body to help me proactively set up, well, here's what I want, rather than if I'm only reacting, it tends to then set up reactivity in my own body, which is more fear than it is responsiveness. So 
those are a couple of the things that I find really, really valuable. Uh, and, uh, and it also agreements have to do with your ability to respond, with your responsibility. And if I'm being proactive about responsibility, then I'm much less likely to drop into the, uh, to the drama triangle of the hero, the villain, and the victim. So yes and no. If I'm ever wobbly about a, a question, I, you know, someone invites me to something or there's an agreement or I want to make a contract with you about something, I will take time away from the interaction to really go into, is this an agreement that I do want to make? And if I have an agreement I want to make with someone, um, I will proactively ask them rather than them waiting to ask me. So those are, and what I experience then is just much more freedom in general. So um, I also would love to share with you from Present Connect Play today. So for those of you for whom this may be new, welcome. Um, we, we play some with, uh, with a loop of awareness, which is giving and receiving attention, and some with our integrity deck, uh, which we've almost moved through all of the cards in the deck now. Uh, and so what I'm going to do after that is just pull one, you know, kind of random. But I wanted to make sure that we went through all of the different ones. And also to let you know, it, those of you who may not know, that we do have videos for all of the, uh, all of the integrity deck cards. And that's on the uh, Foundation for Conscious Living website. But we also have which I would love for you all to know, have, download, share with friends, is the Presence Connect Play uh, app, which now has a video. I have to check with Patrick because he said there was going to be a button uh, directly on the app that could take you to the website. And that has not appeared yet on mine. So I just need to <laughs> find out, do I need to unload it and reload it? So when I find that out, I'll pass that on to you also. But here's what we've got for today. Excellent. Fear, fear melters for presence. So when in doubt, fear melters, because the fear melters, so the oozing and rooting, ah, where you let yourself, so rooting and feeling your roots going down into the earth, but also feeling the roots of the earth and the nourishment, the water coming up through you and nourishing you. So rooting and wiggling. Sometimes you, you could do just a mini wiggle, like a face flap or, you know, just a wiggle through your shoulders or a wiggle through your hips to get that wiggle motion because we tend to get really rigid through the day, you know, and sort of two dimensional. And so this opens up your three dimensionality and then love scoops, which we've done a little bit of already today. So two minutes, just a little reminder that it, to change your state using fear melters takes two minutes. And you may think, oh, two minutes. Two minutes is a long time, like if you set your timer. So don't trust yourself to know what two minutes is because you're, you know, your conditioned speedy self is gonna go on to the next thing that you have to do is gonna rush you through it. So when you're first learning what two minutes is, use a timer or put on music that you really like and let yourself do fear melters through that. So the big thing that that does is move you from the separation of fear to presence, being here. Ah, <sighs> So that's why we have it under presence. <laughs> so, oh, and connect. <laughs> hmm. The hmm. So little kids, when they're playing, uh, you know, and creating something new, will very often be going hmm, 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 hmm. They're humming. And when people are wondering about things, they go hmm. Now, when people are not wondering, but they use the hmm, it comes out like hmm. So it's not a hmm, it's a hmm. And I like to do it through a whole out breath. Hmm, and I can feel the vibration, the resonance of that. Hmm, and then it opens me. So remember I was talking about how opening 
is uh, attached to your yes. And your yes can also then be an opening to connect because our, our need for connection never goes away. So all of our lives, the nourishment of connection is an antidote to all kinds of addictions, including the addiction to speed and adrenaline. And so when I, hmm, it softens my, you know, my sense of urgency and got to do and got to do, hmm, and it allows me to connect both more deeply in here and more deeply with my environment and with others. And then play, ooh, play, play is an advanced move. Bodify your experience for a moment before speaking. This is something that, that really didn't occur to me until recently, that when someone would ask me something, I would almost always freeze. And I didn't realize that I was freezing. I'd have a little, you know, act like I'm in trouble, or I have to know this, or oh, dear. Uh, and so if I'm, when someone asks me something, like, what do you think about the, if I just give my body a moment to respond, so bodifying is letting your body speak. And so if I just let my body speak for a moment, I'm like, Bleh. then I, it uh, refreshes me and it allows what I'm really thinking and experiencing to come to the surface. So I, I love bodifying for all kinds of reasons. But one of the ones I want to invite you into this week to practice is when someone asks you something, let your body speak first and then your mouth. <laughs> so let your body speak to you. And then, so sometimes when I'm doing that, I'll kind of, I may make a noise or I may go. Hmm. So letting your voice be part of that. And what that also will do is lessen the taboo of making sounds. Because we have paying attention combined with don't move and also don't breathe and don't speak. And so when we open up those, what we're going to get is more play. I mean, literally the ability to, uh, to respond in a creative way to what's going on. So those are a part of your, your possibilities for exploration this week. And um, I appreciate very much you all being here and I'm going to um, take my leave now and go on to co-creating with my day and thank you so much and please stay and converse as long as you would like to and thanks again Darlene for hosting and um, see you next time.